This is geometry. 3.3, we're going to have our first day on geometric proofs. In general, we talk about a theorem, and a theorem is a logical statement that can be proven. We can prove that to be true. This is a question on your final exam. A logical statement that can be proven is a theorem. Yesterday we talked about equality. Today we're talking about congruence. So when we talk about the reflexive property of congruence, we're talking about two shapes with the same size and shape. So AB, segment AB, will be congruent to segment AB. They are congruent to each other. And then if we talk about transitive, notice that we have two parts, or you have a part here, a part there, so that's two parts, and then we have a third part. Take a look. Segment AB is congruent to segment CD. Segment CD is congruent to segment EF. Therefore, what could we say? So segment AB is congruent to segment EF. That is the transitive property. So this is kind of saying, if my pencil is the size of your pencil, and your pencil is the size of your neighbor's pencil, then my pencil is the size of your neighbor's pencil. This is also true with angles. We can have two angles that are the same size and shape. I showed you an image yesterday. Here we can talk about how there's two triangles in here. There's a tr small triangle on top and there's a big triangle. Both of these triangles have the same angle A in them. So. It, it could become necessary for us to talk about how A in the small triangle is congruent to A in the big triangle. So A, angle A, is congruent to angle A. And the reason for that is the reflexive property. It's because it is the same angle. And then, just like we did with segments, if angle A is congruent to angle B, and angle B is congruent to angle C, then angle A is congruent to angle C. If the angle that I have is the same as the angle that you've drawn, and the angle that you drew is the same angle as your friend drew, then my angle is the same as your friend's angle. Angle A is congruent to angle C. Notice how there are three parts to this. It's the only one with three parts. Reflexive property practically has one part. And transitive property has all three parts. So looking down here. Again, we can very quickly recognize part one, part two, part three. We have a pretty good guess on what this is going to be. But it would be great if you could line up the letters to verify that. H and T. Then we know that T is the same as B. So H is the same as B. That's the transitive property of congruence. Now, congruence is important. Congruence is not an equal symbol. Yesterday we did transitive property of equality. That's if we were working with equal signs. Today we're working with congruent symbols. 
Substitution would not work here. You're not allowed to substitute in a congruent statement. Substitution is only for equality. So that's what makes transitive very important if you're working with congruent statements. All right, here we have CD being congruent to DC. Yes, they changed the order. There's some times in geometry where we're going to talk about maybe it would say CD. C is from a small angle down to a big angle. If we drew another triangle that also went from a small angle up to the big angle, that would be in an opposite order. That would be D to C. If we talked about how C to D in the order of small angle to big angle, the other triangle has a small angle to a big angle, and that would be the letters are reversed. But it's still the same segment. It's still the same bar that's in between the two triangles. This is still the reflexive property. of congruence. And then our last one, segment DB is congruent to segment ST, segment ST is congruent to segment GH. So what do we suspect is going to happen? Try to have a prediction before you move on. DB and ST, ST and GH, so DB has to be the same as GH. If they're both congruent to ST, they have to be congruent to each other. And that's what we have. So that's the transitive property of congruence. So very similar to what we did yesterday, but yesterday was equality, today is congruence. Same vocab. All right, let's move down to our first experience with the geometry proof. All right, this can be a little intimidating. So here we go. What we're looking at, you always start with your given information. Don't worry about looking at how the proof is put together. Ignore that for now. Every single time you start a proof, you're going to start with the given information. Look in your picture for that given information. AC, okay, that's the whole distance. The whole distance is AC. We are told that this is supposed to equal AB plus AB again. AB plus AB is making up AC. Okay, that's the given information. I can accept that. It's possible that part of the shape being repeated is going to make up the whole shape. If it's being repeated to make up the whole shape, I'm betting that these two have to be the same to each other then. And that's actually what we're supposed to prove. We're supposed to prove that segment AB is going to be the same as BC. So we're going to come down and try to make a two-column proof about it. So just like we learned yesterday, we start out with statement and reason, we make a two column proof. You take your given information, and we write it under our first statement and write the word reason, or under reason you write given. That's where this comes from. They're asking us, if you have this, 
AB plus BC equals AC. Take a look at your picture. AB is the small part. BC is the small part. AC is the full part. Where does that come from? What allows us to say this? This was not part of the given. It's very close to what the given says, but it's a little bit different than what the given says. So this was a property that we had learned previously that the small part plus the small part equals a big part. We call that the segment addition postulate. Now, in our proof, we have gotten the equation set up. In, in fact, we have brought in BC into the problem. We didn't have BC originally. So now we see how BC is related. Since we have these two, AB plus AB, that's the same as AC. And also, AB plus BC is equal to AC. AC is equal to two different things. So those two different things are equal to each other. If this portion is equal to AC, and AC is equal to this portion, then those portions are equal to each other. That's the transitive property of equality. There's your abbreviation, P-O-E, property of equality. Now we're trying to get down to just having the A, B, and the B, C on the sides of the equal sign. So to do that, we have to remove what they have in common. And that leaves us with the A, B, that leaves us with the B, C. So we did the subtraction property of equality. That's a lot. Okay, but that's a geometry proof. You always put what you're trying to prove as your last statement. You always put what you're given as your first statement. Your first reason will typically always be given because that's where that came from. But unfortunately, listen to this, unfortunately, the last reason is never, ever the word proven. People say that often. Proven. Uh, you wrote given, so you might as well write proven. No, it'll never, you'll never write the word proven on your paper. You can use definitions, you can use postulates, you can use any type of theorems for explanations on why we're taking the steps we are. Okay, let's try one on our own. On the flip side. One neat part about Unit 3, in Unit 3, we are given boxes. Boxes are pretty much a multiple choice option. All you have to do is put this puzzle together that would match up reasons to go with the statements. What order do these boxes go in here? Okay. As you get better at these, as you get more experienced, I would try to get you to ignore the boxes, do the proof, and then see if the wording matches up from the boxes. But let's move forward. Whenever you start a proof, ignore the actual two columns. Always start up with what you're given and what you're trying to prove. Convince yourself that this is possible. Convince yourself that you understand what's being asked. Because you can't do a proof if you don't know where you're going. So, this says Ray BD bisects angle ABC. Ray BD bisects angle ABC. So, trace it out with your finger, with your pencil, at least with your eyes what that's talking about. 
What does it mean for ray BD to bisect? What does that mean? It's in the middle, cuts it exactly in half. Very much. It has to be exactly in half. So that makes these two angles the same. So if these two angles are the same, it's kind of like angle one plus angle one because they're the same. And if it's angle one and angle one, then it's two times the angle one. So the big angle is the angle one twice because angle one is the same as angle two. So it's just angle one twice. So I do, I understand how we're going to prove that. I see that if that's the bisector, then I see that it's angle one being twice to make up the whole thing. You have to convince yourself of that before you begin your proof. You got to know where you're going. Okay, now we can start our proof. Now, on your quiz, your proof is going to look a lot like this. You're going to have information on one side, but you're going to have the other side blank. And you have to figure out the words that go in the blanks. Right now, it's kind of like putting together a puzzle. Ray BD bisects angle ABC. What allowed us to say that statement? It was given to us. So we write the word given in here. Don't just draw arrows. Write the word given and you can cross that off. Now think about this. How do I know that angle one is congruent to angle two? For what reason is angle one going to be congruent to angle two? That was not exactly the given. That's not what the given says. It says nothing about one and two. Nice job. If a ray bisects an angle, because we know it bisects, if comes earlier, then it divides the segment into two congruent angles. Then we have two congruent angles. So we have an even shorter than writing all those words out. If bisect, or bisector, if you like to write that in, if bisector or angle bisector might even be better than congruent we can stop there if bisect because that's what we had earlier then what are we doing now we have congruent angles we have congruence we got that from this statement Okay, now this is a weird one. We haven't talked about this yet. Here we're going from congruence, and we're just going to write it with equal signs. We're going to write it as equality. We need to have it with equal signs so we can start to talk about equations. We don't have equations on our paper yet. So we have to get that involved. So it's as simple as if two angles are congruent, because that's what we had earlier. If comes earlier, then is happening right now. Then is this line. Then they are equal in measure. If congruent, then equal. You can write those words up here in the box word for word if you like. Or we have a few abbreviations that can help us along. If congruent, if these uh, angles are congruent, then the angles are equal. All right, where's this line come from? This line looks a lot like something else we've talked about today. Take a look at the order, take a look at the information. What's the reasoning for this? Angle addition property. The 
or postulate actually. The, the two, the small part plus the small part equals a big part. This is saying that the small part plus the small part equals a big part. So this is the angle addition postulate. So this says POE. That's not really what they're supposed to have here. That should be postulate. All right, we come down to the next one. This is the one that we're substituting for. Since 1 equals 2, we take the 2 out of it and we put the 1 into it. Because 1 equals 2. So we're going to remove the 2 and put in the 1. So that's substitution property of equality. And then number 6, since we have angle 1 twice, we're actually just simplifying or collecting like terms. Simplify property of equality. So we have used each of our boxes. And that's your proof. You went from your given information, you gave logical steps to get what we're trying to prove. And that's going to be your exactly last statement is what you're trying to prove. Let's try one more. Last one. This is interesting. Take a close look. Don't worry about your two-column proof yet. Just look at the given and what you're trying to prove. R is the midpoint of AM. What does that mean to you? If R is the midpoint of AM, then you know that both sides of that M, that midpoint, are the same to each other. You also are supposed to know that MB, that's this guy over here, is supposed to be the same measurement as AR. So it's also going to have the same number of tick marks on it. What we have to justify or what we have to explain to ourselves is that the M is the midpoint of RB. Does that make sense to you on why M would have to be the midpoint? If R is the midpoint and MB equals AR, then these two have the same measurements also, which makes it the midpoint. Let's give it a try. So we're going to start out with part, notice this, part of our given. Oh, actually the whole thing. They're putting the whole thing in here. So that's our given. They put the given in our first reason. Then we have AR is congruent to RM. So take a look at your given. They tell you this is a midpoint. What does a midpoint mean? If midpoint, if a segment has a midpoint, then what happens? Then it uh, cuts it in half, but what's it telling us right here? Then, uh, what's that symbol? Congruent. So, if you have a midpoint, then you have congruent segments. If midpoint, then you have congruent segments. <clears throat> so that's pretty much <clears throat> what this one says. All right. Now, this is that funny one again. Take a notice on what's different between these two statements. What's the only thing different? The sign. So, if congruent segments, then equal segments. You can reuse the word segment there if you like. Now, we know that MB equals AR. We know that AR equals RM. So, MB is going to equal AR. Substitution property of equality. 
Then we're going to turn it into congruence. If equal, then congruent. And that's telling us that if a point divides a segment into two, then midpoint is formed. That's pretty much what that guy is talking about. So we have used each one of these throughout a proof. Good job. That's a big one.